Hello, this is Angela Anderson. Thanks for joining me for this acrylic painting tutorial. In this video, I'll be showing you how to paint a rustic wagon wheel with some yellow flowers. It should be a pretty easy project. We're going to simplify it a little bit, uh, keep it very simple. I've got my husband, Mark, with me. Hey there, everybody. He's going to man and chat for our live show. So if you've got questions, you can ask those in all caps and we'll try to answer them. Let's get started. Okay, so this is my reference image. Uh, I think I decided I'm going to go ahead and put the red all the way across. And uh, in this picture, there is uh, some perspective here. That wall is a little bit at an angle to us. Thought I would simplify it, and we're just going to go straight across with all the lines. And we're going to take out this tree, and so it'll be kind of more like this, that what we end up with. And that, that'll make it a little bit more beginner-friendly, I think. So I think definitely this will be uh, an easy project for beginners. That's what the hope is, at least. So. <laughs> We're going to try. That's got, what we say at the beginning. Every time. I don't. <laughs> <laughs> I've got my uh, canvas, uh, Belgian linen canvas board from Frederick's uh, 9 by 12 size. Uh, and I'm going to be using some Princeton brushes uh, to paint with. These are the 6100 series. Got a 12 bright, 6 bright, 4 bright, and a 2 round. And then I've got, uh, let's see, a 3 inch angle brush. Uh, that's like one of my favorite be just basic brushes. If you get one brush, get this one. <laughs> I mean, seriously, it's it's uh, pretty much can do anything. Those angle brushes are pretty, pretty awesome. Uh, Willow's Blender, 3 8 inch, or a fan brush, or a Deerfoot stippler, some sort of uh, stippling tool. So these two are the select 3 8 inch and uh, 10 aught fan brush. So bristle fan. And thank you to our sponsors. Yes, thank you to our sponsors, Fredericks and Princeton, for providing our materials for this video. All right, let's go ahead and go over your colors. I've got ultramarine blue and burnt umber over here because we're going to make a gray. Got uh, carbon black. Unbleached titanium, titanium white, quinacridone magenta, cadmium red, medium, cadmium red light, yellow oxide, cadmium yellow, medium, cadmium yellow light, thalo green, yellow shade, thalo blue, green shade, and burnt sienna. So basic palette. Really, you can use any reds. I've just got a, a cool red, like a purpley red, uh, medium red, and then a orangey red. So uh, that way we can kind of get some depth in our red barn wood in the background. I'm going to dip my brush in water and pick up some red. What? You're not ready? I wasn't ready for the side cam of the oh, side water camera. dipping. Oh, that's okay. That's all right. And since we're going to be go ahead and put the red all the way across, I'm going to spray my canvas just a little bit with a little bit of water. What this will do is help that paint go on a little bit more smoothly. You don't want to do it too much because it can kind of create a soppy mess if you put too much water down, but just a little bit will help that paint just kind of smooth onto a dry canvas a little bit easier for your first coat. I'm just gonna go straight across with this red. This is just the cadmium red medium. So I'm gonna start with that, that'll be our main color in the background and then we'll add some of the other colors for a little bit of depth. And I'm just going to go side to side with it because that's the direction that we want our wood grain to flow and that way if we have any streaks we can leave them and it'll be part of our painting. If we did it this way we'd be having to fight all these streaks that are going the wrong direction. So. Pro tip number one. Pro tip, yep. That will. Well, actually number two. What was number one? Spraying? Sp spraying. Spraying the canvas. Okay, so yes. we should number them. So, <laughs> so what if you sneezed on your canvas? Would that count as spraying it? <laughs> I don't know. Probably not. <laughs> How juicy it was, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> I wouldn't recommend it. Okay, just check in. Although I have spit on my canvases quite a bit. <laughs> wiping, wiping, you know, to wipe yep. off mistakes. <laughs> Spit on the towel and wipe it. 
off instead of dipping into my water. That's gross, sorry. They didn't need to know that. <laughs> Super chat. Super chat, yes. We got disco lights, but you can't see them. It's being blocked by the foam. It's from er Erica. She says, thanks for painting the wagon wheel. I love this picture. Oh, good. You're and welcome, Thank Erica. you so much, Erica, for your yeah, donation you. and your support. And I'll move the foam so you can see the lights. That's fine. Really don't, honey. Oh, okay. okay. All right. It's so much more exciting. Okay. All right, I'm adding quinacridone magenta. Now you can wait for this red to dry and do this uh, later. I'm doing it while it's wet. It's going to kind of blend a little bit more, but it really doesn't matter um, either way. If you let it dry first, what you'll do is just kind of add just a little bit of paint to your brush and sort of dry brush across the canvas. Actually, I want to go ahead and have you dry this for me, honey, so I can show that technique. Because I think it'll be a little bit easier. Because, thank you. What can happen with acrylic paints is if you, if they start to dry, they'll get sticky. And so the more you mess with them, the more they'll lift. And so um, that's kind of one of the most common beginner problems is that they keep working on a an, an area for too long and they don't let it dry in between steps. So. That will be, make it a little bit easier. I'm going to go ahead and pull out Stickman. We haven't done him, anything on him in a while. We'll give him a little wheel over here in the corner. He's our mascot. Mark drew him. We add to him whenever I have him blow dry pretty much. So we're just going to give him a wagon wheel over here in the corner. I think the last time we did it was maybe the llama because there's the tassel. So I don't, I didn't get these wagon wheels things all that even but that's all right just for fun there we go he got a little wagon wheel on him all right let's set that aside so welcome those who are new to our channel uh, hope you will subscribe and come back we do these shows twice a week um, Saturdays and Tuesdays and uh, my whole goal is just to kind of try to help you uh, learn to paint in a fun and relaxing environment it can be kind of difficult uh, especially if you don't feel like you have uh, a lot of um, experience with painting uh, or felt like you didn't have enough talent or whatever for whatever reason you haven't painted before uh, it can be a little bit challenging but uh, my whole motto is that uh, you can learn if you just practice and my job is to help you give you projects like this that will make it a little bit easier so I'm gonna load up I don't have a whole lot of paint on here so that's a key with dry brushing you don't want a lot of paint I'm just gonna skim this reddish red or orangish red I should say across See, it'll pick up the texture of the canvas, and the more uh, the more textured your canvas, the more obvious this will be. This canvas is only slightly textured, so we're not going to get a huge effect from this. If you have a brush that's kind of uh, scruffy, like a, a bristle brush, you can even get more streaks with that. I think this is working pretty good for us. I'm going to grab a little bit more of that reddish or purpley red color put some of that in now I'm going to grab my black and I'm going to mix my red in with it so it softens it just a little bit and I'm going to grab a ruler where is my ruler there it is and I'm just going to go ahead and start right at the bottom here you see I'm going to start up about right there I think and I'm going to lay my brush flat against that edge as flat as I can get it and just skim straight across 
there's my first line of my fence. I'm going to do another one right here. Let's see. One, two, three, four. I think I can get four more in there. Let me do one in the middle. And let me think. One, two, three, four, five. I might want to try to get another one up here. Just trying to measure that. Okay, let's do this. I guess we've got a ruler here. Why don't we make it handy, right? Why not? Why? you got fingers there, too. <laughs> well, I just want to get them kind of evenly spaced. So we've got about one and a half inch there. So one there. One there. 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 Okay. And you may want to wipe down. I noticed that I got a little bit of that black on my canvas. You may want to wipe down in between lines, but I, honestly, it doesn't matter that much because we're going to go ahead and dry brush a little bit of this black on e anyway, so it really won't matter. Get a little bit more of that on there. There we go. And I'm not being... I'm going to fly... Um, using a T-square will help you keep your line straight because uh, if you're using just a regular ruler, it, might, it can your lines can get a little bit lopsided. So just uh, make sure that you're lining up your ruler square with your edge if you just have a regular ruler. Right, and I'm letting this be kind of dry brushed so that my edges are a little bit blurred between my fence slats. They don't have to be perfectly straight because I do want to go through and now I'm going to wipe almost all of that off of my brush. So I have a really dry brush. There's very little paint on there and I'm just going to skim it along those lines. And what this will do is kind of create that shadow across like how the boards kind of have the, that shadow where they they may be a little bit uh, rounded, where they meet each other, and that'll make it a little bit more authentic looking. If nothing's coming off, just get a little tiny bit of paint and do this. This one was very dark. It's our first one. All right, now I'm going to get a little bit, tiny bit more paint here, and I'm going to create some streaks. Maybe just touch the corner. Instead of holding it flat like this, I'm going to angle it a little bit so that a little, just the corners touching here and there. But I do want to keep my lines horizontal. Wood grain will kind of wobble a little bit. You know, it has knots here and there, so you can have a little bit of wiggling on the lines, but for the most part, you're gonna to wanna to keep them straight. Okay, there we go. And then right here at the bottom, I'm just going to grab some of this unbleached titanium and mix it in with my red and create my foreground. I'm going to have some rocks and things in here. I'm not going to go to a lot of detail, but I do want to have something there. And then grab that black, and I want to have dark shadow right there where that board meets the ground. And I did it in with that wet paint, so I kind of blended it a little bit. Alright, there we go. 
gonna grab a line, like a round number two, a number two round, and I'm gonna grab some of the unbleached or the quinacridone magenta and mix a little bit of the black in with it. And I'm gonna make just a few knots, so I'm gonna do little rounded circles, very keep it very light, just the tip of the brush. They're not perfect circles and they're not solid, so I'm just gonna do them sort of sketchy, if that makes sense. Don't get too caught up on the, the details on these. It's actually better if you just kind of do them quickly and move on. Um, they may look weird at first, but the more you do, the more, uh, I think more natural they'll kind of be. Just kind of little semicircles. I just kind of start with the circle in the middle and then sort of make it a little bit bigger and do sort of outline it slightly. If you get it too dark, you can just kind of rub off a little bit with your finger. You don't have to do it with all of the boards. Some of them can be plain. There might be some cracks in some of them, so you can just kind of do some darker lines. Get creative. This is kind of fun. Uh, just make sure that it's not super dark black because we want the wagon wheel to be on top, so we don't want it to be overwhelming um, dark. Let me grab a little bit of some medium brush here. This is my Princeton number no. six sprite. I'm going to grab some of the red, a little bit of that quinacridone, or the unbleached titanium, make a light red. The unbleached titanium has a little bit of yellow oxide in it. The yellow will kind of neutralize the bright tones in the red and make it not so pink. It'll make it more of an orangey red. Pro tip number three, add, add yellow to your reds when you make them light to keep them from turning pink. I'm just gonna do... Check. I'll tell all the guys that. <laughs> they were wondering that, how to keep that from happening. <laughs> I'm going to just, this bo bottom board here, just kind of right along that red, that dark line just above it. Just add a little bit of this highlight color. We've had a request for a close-up of the knots. Okay. So let me know when you're ready to okay. zoom zoom. While we do that, say hi to everybody who's joined us tonight. We appreciate you spending your evening here with us. We do. <clears throat> we have several first-time live viewers with us tonight. So nice. Welcome. Good to have you. And if you're new to Angela's channel, you can subscribe, hit the bell, like, links down below to all kinds of Google stuff. Yeah, if you hit the bell, it'll actually notify you of new videos. So even if you're already subscribed, it's a good idea if you want to make sure that you don't miss out on any of the videos we do. Super chat again. This time from our friend Carol. No message, but I think she likes wagon wheels. She likes what? Wagon wheels. <laughs> Thank you, Karen. <laughs> Carol. Carol, sorry. Oh, that was bad. That was bad. Sorry, Carol. So, Karen, you've got to give now, too. <laughs> Angela's already Don't said thank let the you, so be let down. that's right. <laughs> so go ahead. <laughs> All right. Hope we're not gonna turn off the lights here. Too. Yeah. Are we ready to zoom in? Sure. I'm not. Okay, I'm zooming. Let's do one more over here. We'll do one. Ooh. So there's one there. There's two there. You can kind of see. Let's do one. They look very naughty. 
here. So kind of a, whoop, too much water. Just wipe my brush off a little bit and get that water off. All right, so kind of a semicircles to start with. And then I just get wider with them, go around and round, and keep them kind of oval shaped. And then as I get out to the outside, I can kind of taper them off, um, do some lines around the outside of them. Like that wood grain is kind of split and made room for the knot. Make it a little bit darker in the center there. That's all we're doing. Just making sure we leave kind of like a lot of space in there and keep it light. I think that that's the key. Okay. Let me zoom back out, him. Huh? All right. Now for the wagon wheel itself, uh, I think our background is good enough. I can go in too much detail. Um, we're going to use a round bowl. Just want to find one, something that is about this, just slightly less wide than we want our wagon wheel to be. So we want the wheel to be right here. We're going to kind of set it down a little bit on the edge. And I'm going to use the number six flat. I'm going to clean that out. It's got red in it right now. exciting but I gotta get my brush clean there we go okay so you're going to want to have it a little bit off center so I'm going to move it to this side just a little bit make room for our flowers to be in here and um, I'm gonna come down almost to the edge here I'm going to use this width of the brush to create the width of my wagon wheel. So just make it however big of a canvas you're doing. Just make sure when you set your brush down that you're going to have uh, about, I guess it's about a half inch, I guess, or so of space around to do our wheel and just make sure you've got enough room at the top and bottom for it to go around. I'm gonna move it down just a little bit more. Okay, I'm going to use my black, grab some water. Every now and then you want to dip in water, and especially if you're starting a new, a new color on your brush, you've cleaned it out. You want to just dip in just a little bit of water and just pick it up at the corner of your brush or the tip of your brush. You don't want to dunk your brush in because that way the, the water gets up into here and uh, it can drip like it did when I was doing that one. So I'm gonna start right about here, I think. And just use the edge of my bowl to carefully go around. I'll have to reload several times. And I'm not really pressing down, so I'm letting the br the width of the brush do the work for me. If you press down, you can get uh, a little bit wider line. So if you if you have a brush that's not quite as wide as you want it to be, just press down a little bit harder, and you can get a little bit thicker line. But just make sure that you're kind of pressing down the same all the way around. That way you'll have an even width on your wheel. And 
I'm smoothing out any ridges that I see as I work so I don't want to have any really thick ridges to have to deal with. So acrylic paint dries like plastic. It it dries, it is a polymer plastic, so it dries hard. And if you have any ridges in your paint, they'll dry hard as well. And then if you're trying to, you know, smooth them out later, you'll never really be able to get them smooth because you'll always have that little ridge in there. So you just want to take your time and as you work, smooth yourself, smooth out your lines. I'm not going to have too many issues with it with this painting, but like if I, if I ended here with a really thick line, like if I had a really thick amount of paint right here, and then when I went all the way around and then came back to it, I could end up with a little bit of a, a raised line right there that I didn't want. So just be aware of that when you're starting your circle, not to, not to leave a little ridge of paint of thick paint I should say okay let's see how we did Ooh, not too bad there we go all right and I can go back through and you know, it's stick man <laughs> it's his head there he is just put a smiley face on him and we're all set no no smiley face no smiley faces on stick man you obviously don't know, have been paying attention. <laughs> and honestly, you could turn your canvas around as you work. You might find it is easier to paint these circles uh, in a, in in this right to left direction or left to right direction, kind of like how you would. Uh, use a pen if you were writing you'll have a little bit more control you'll feel a little bit more natural so keep that in mind you can do that if you want to I don't really know why I'm doing that because it was already pretty pretty good but just felt like I needed to I guess all right so now I'm gonna make a gray with my blue and burnt umber just makes a really pretty brownish gray depending on how much brown you add if you add a little bit more blue of course it'll be a little bit more bluish gray so it's just like a perfect combo I love using these colors together to create a gray instead of using black and white I'm gonna wipe off my brush I've added just enough white to kind of make a medium gray color and I'm going to very lightly just like we did with our wood grain I want to lightly run this color over the top of our black leave a lot of the black showing I'm just going to run it in the direction of the circle so that now that wood grain is curved around the wheel. And if you have too much paint on your brush, you'll end up with, you know, just like solid stripes. So if that happens, just wipe your brush off a little bit. And you'll get more uneven streaks. Grab a little bit more white. Mix that in. Wipe out most of it off. I'm going to go in and A little bit brighter on this side of the wheel. So we're just going to give it a little bit more attention with the highlights over here. Okay. And then I'm going to grab a little bit of that black and run it through 
just like we did here, create some little grains if we put in too much of the too much of the highlight color you can kind of adjust it here as well so if you ended up with like a solid gray area you can go back in and add a little bit of this black wood grain okay All right now I'm going to now ideally if you have a another plate that's a little bit bigger than the one we just used you could set that down now and use it but I don't so we're just gonna have to do our best with this and I'm going to go around the outside of my circle with a brush and just kind of pick one that's about the width that you want your outline of your wheel to be and try to keep it pressed down just about the same firmness all the way around so I'm just gonna go all the way around the outside of our wheel And here's definitely where you're going to want to turn your canvas as you work. Do it in small sections. I'm just going to go all the way around one more time. So are you going to have a traceable for this circle? Uh -huh. Are you going to have a traceable for this circle? Oh, yeah. We'll have a traceable for it available nice. on Patreon. We've got traceables for all of our videos since February 2017 when we started on Patreon. Available on their website. It's a dollar a month for access to all the traceables that I've ever done. Unlimited downloads for one dollar a month. So, if you've got a couple of my paintings that you've been wanting to do, but you don't feel like you can draw them, you can go there and download it and trace it onto your canvas and paint it in really easily. Do not have to know how to draw to be able to enjoy painting. Well, that's right, good. There we go. And I'm going to let that dry. We're going to go ahead and put in a little bit of highlight on that part of it as well, but I, I want to let it dry first. So. Clean out my brushes a little bit. And you want to make sure you're not letting your brushes sit in the water. I do that too often and they'll end up cracking. The There's wood, you know, in the middle of it and it'll end up cracking the paint. The wood will expand and the, the paint will crack. It doesn't damage the brush necessarily, but it's not good great for them. It can warp them just a little bit. The wood can warp, so you don't want to leave it in your setting in your water too long. All righty. Let me see. I think I actually want to use, I think about it, I think I'm going to use a number two flat because I think that'll be about the width that I want these cross pieces to be. And I'm going to mark out my center best I can. Right about there. Look right. Maybe. Yeah, you have to know geometry. 
I don't know. You can measure it if yeah. you wanted to. That looks about right. I think the formula is pi r good. What? I think the formula is pi r good. Okay. I didn't hear what you were saying. I can't I understand. I don't speak that language. <laughs> no, it's been too long since school. <laughs> Then we'll just do super chat. Nice. This one's from Shirley Arge. Says, thanks, Angela, for all you do. Your tutorials really inspire me. Uh -huh. Watching from hospital after, I think it's knee surgery. I think I think I heard that she was having that, or she yes. posted in the group that she was having it. I hope you're feeling better soon. Up on your feet. Thank you. Yes, thank you so much for your generosity. Okay. I am just trying to make sure that I get this correct here. You could use chalk. That would probably be better than paint. <laughs> but I'm going to live dangerously. You're going to want to make an X down the middle. So that's how you're going to want to start. Just make sure that you're getting your center Correct. I think we're pretty close there. And I want to make sure that these are all at right angles here to one another. And then I'm going to fit in, let's see, two more in between each of these. So I'm just going to try to get them even. I'm going to go ahead and kind of do it from here to here. It'll be easier to kind of measure how wide they are. They're there. They're there. And they're in there. Okay. Then we can kind of match those up. Go across. I'm going to start thin and then we'll thicken them up later, but I want to make sure that I get them placed correctly. If I do them thin enough, then I can move them around a little bit if I need to. So I think that's pretty close. Like I said, you can do this part in chalk first just to make sure that you're getting it correct. Correct. like a bicycle tire right now so <laughs> if you're into biking you can adapt it <laughs> maybe <laughs> you're welcome <laughs> we can go ahead and fill that in now and I'm gonna make this oh I don't have a stencil but if you had a stencil or you had some sort of a, a circle that was the size you can Kind of use that for your center to chalk it out and then make your circle perfect. Is that like a quarter size? Huh? Yeah, about a quarter size. It sounds about right. It's a little bit wider than the center is going to have like a the hub. So it's going a little bit wider than the Hub, and then we'll grab a round brush, some of that gray that we have over here. And I'm going to draw a hexagon. Is that a hexagon? No. Is that? Is that? Six. Looks like it's got six sides, so that should, that's right, right? Yeah. Hexagon. Yeah. Sounds right. <sighs> math. Who knew how much math there was in art? Not okay, enough. So I'm gonna do not enough. <laughs> I'm gonna do a rough circle. 
with is gray around. Especially when you don't get the jokes. <laughs> Your pie joke. Sorry. Yeah. yeah, I didn't get that. I, I mean, I remember. Well, the, the formula for the circumference is pi r squared. Okay. And I said pi r good twice, and you still didn't get it, so... <laughs> I really, I really kind of don't still get it, so it's okay. I'm going to just do like a <laughs> star shape and do like that. Somebody please help me here. <laughs> I'm dying. <laughs> pi are good. Okay. Instead of pi is good. Right. So play, forget it. Just. So the. Okay. Never mind. I'm not gonna. It's hurting my brain right now. <laughs> Go flat. Flatten my brush out and do kind of highlights all the way around. I don't want to go right up to it, but I kind of want to have about even amount all the way around that hub there. I'm gonna grab my black. And kind of go in with the dark. There we go. On one side. What? My hand's out of focus. I think the red color is playing with the autofocus because it oh, likes to focus on your hand. it's going in and out, in and out. Mm -hmm. Gonna grab a little bit of white. I'm just gonna put a highlight right along the edge there, mixing it a little bit with the black. Go in and put a bright highlight right along that those two lines right there, and then a little bit along the outside edge of that. There we go. That'll just pop that forward, make it look raised. Can put a little bit on this side too, very lightly. Okay, there we go. <coughs> okay, and then I want to put a little bit of this, flatten my brush out so it's nice and flat, and I'm going to use it on my edge up here of the rim. We'll run along that edge, add some white streaks. Like that. Leave that dark crease right there. That's what will make this look like it's different than the outside edge. So go right along that outside edge with it. Zoom out a little bit, honey. It's way too close. <laughs> well, now that I'm doing the outside edge, it's not showing. I mean, you can't see the whole thing. Okay, there we go. And then I'm going to stop about right there. And there's a little bit of a highlight over here, but not much. Just a little tiny bit to make it pop out. Maybe a little bit here. Most of this is going to be covered up by our flowers, so... What are you laughing at over there? Oh, Frank and others say that the, this painting has spoke to them. You're not speaking loud enough. I can't hear you. They said that this painting spoke to them. Oh, God. <laughs> Surrounded by punny people. You asked. <laughs> That's all right. Here we go. These are our spokes, and this is about a quarter inch. So this one was half inch quarter inch there and that was not laying flat on my canvas. I'm going to get a ruler that is not my T2 
T-square because my T-square was raised up and it seeped underneath. So I'm going to just clean that up on that side. Using the edge of my brush and running it side to side like this will give me a little bit more control than if I was trying to do a straight line this way. Because you've already got this kind of straight edge to work with. So you've got a kind of a head start on getting a straight line if you use it side to side like that. Okay, there we go. Oops. So a little bit on one side of my Which brush are you using right now? This is a number two flat. So I was gonna use the number two round for this, but I figured the flat would make it a little bit easier, so I need to make that a little bit wider so it matches the other one. I'm going to press down a little bit harder to get a little thicker line. If you want to, you could do all of this black first and then do your highlights because you're going to want to make sure that you don't go too far over on top of what you've already painted over here. So, make sure you wipe off any edges. Make sure you don't have too much water in your brush too because having a lot of water in your brush can make it uh, seep as well. So I'm going to go back here and just kind of clean up that edge because I had kind of a solid line there. There we go. And these actually get a little bit wider where they attach to the hub, so we can kind of widen those out just a little bit. Right there. Make them look a little more authentic. You're being awfully quiet. You don't have any wagon wheel facts or anything for us tonight, huh? Uh, no. I didn't think about that. <laughs> That's all right. Oh, well, no, it's not, since you mentioned it. Well, no, it's fine. I yes. just wondered if you were looking up wagon wheel facts. You were being quiet over there. I am now. Now you are. <laughs> Covered up one of my knots. No, oh, well, I know. I hit that one too. So we want to sketch out your design before you do your knots, just a little bit, so you kind of know where to place them better. Don't cover them up. There we go. It's coming together. 
there. Apparently there's a song wagon wheel. Oh yeah, yeah. I've yeah, Darius Rucker uh sang that with one of the American Idol contestants. Can't remember his name. One of the finalists he got number two. Or mm. sorry, I shouldn't say that because somebody might not have watched it. <laughs> Spoiler alert. <laughs> way to ruin it, right? The song was co written by Bob Dylan and Catch Seeker Seekor of Old Crow Medicine Show. Really? A Bob Dylan song? Yeah. That's cool. So Bob Dylan wrote the chorus in 1973, and mm-hmm. then Catch Secor added the verses 25 years later. I did not know that. It's a catchy song. I don't really like country music, but it's it's not too country. It's more folksy. A wagon wheel is two biscuits with marshmallow sandwich filling covered in chocolate. Are you hungry? I'm just reading what I'm seeing on the web here. Just wondering. <laughs> my my sweet uh, Facebook group was all concerned about you getting to eat on Tuesdays. I know. So I, I'm somebody to that. suggested that I should cook dinner before you get home on Tuesdays before the show. <laughs> and what I thought. Before you even said anything, because I was listening to the show, I was like, yeah, they don't know her. <laughs> <laughs> I said, yeah, you probably don't know me very well. <laughs> that, that's, that's not my girl. No. <laughs> <laughs> you don't want me cooking when I'm distracted about what I've got to do for work later. And then she told the story of the flaming quesadilla. The flaming quesadilla. <laughs> Hashtag flaming quesadilla. <laughs> of a quesadilla. I want to know. I mean, seriously, it's not, it's like five minutes. I come home and I look out on the back porch (laughs) and I see a flour tortilla laying out there. (laughs) I'm like, what is that? I go pick it up and the other side is just blacker than night. It's hilarious. It was flaming. I mean, (laughs) literally a flaming quesadilla. Oh gosh. That was bad. Yep. That was one of my weaker mo- cooking <laughs> moments. I'm actually a decent cook when I put my mind to it. I just... Not on show nights, that's obvious. Not when I'm <laughs> in the middle of working. Obviously, it took five minutes to go make myself a quesadilla and forgot all about it. Because it was taking too long, so I left it cooking. <laughs> I came into the <laughs> studio to do something real quick and... Literally, I. How do you forget that you're cooking something? I just. It's frustrating. It's I've I've lived with this handicap though, so it's just I know my, I know my limits most of the time. So bless you for wanting to me to cook for Mark. It would be ideal if I really would be able to function that way, but I don't. If you want me around longer, you wouldn't wish that upon me. What? That if they want me around longer, they wouldn't wish that upon me. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> There's a reason they why want this us is to have a, a house. <clears throat> that this is a painting show and not a cooking show. Exactly. Exactly. Just say it. Yep. We we tried the, the cooking show, but it just didn't work out. <laughs> And then we tried the math show, and that didn't work out. <laughs> <laughs> and then we tried art, said, okay, this might work. <laughs> I think this is her calling. Yep. Tuesday nights are sandwich nights. <laughs> pizza and pizza sandwich. Easy. Easy meal. Spencer had his last day of school. He's our 16 year old sophomore. So now he's a junior, I guess, technically, because today was his last day of school. But he's off with his friends having fun, enjoying. 
the start of summer break. Yeah, <clears throat> but as they get older, it gets less fun because then they have jobs. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay, trying to make these all the same size. Decided not to use the ruler, but that may not be the best choice here, but that's all right. I'll go a little bit faster. This is probably the most tedious part, so just take your time. Realize you've got flowers coming, so you know if you really make a mess mistake, do it on this side. So <laughs> you can start over here. <laughs> this will be your practice side, uh, and then if you make any mistakes, you can cover them with flowers. Okay, there we go. Looking good. All right, so now what we need to do is put a little bit of our gray highlights here and there. I'm just going to use it very lightly. And don't go all the way up here. We want that nice and dark right there where these two meet. Go along one edge over here. Along the top edges on this side. And then this one is kind of in shadow. So these kind of fall off into the shadow area. And we have some bright hitting right here. I'm going to spray my palette every now and then just to keep it moist. And these ones are pretty bright, so I'm going to go ahead and go pretty pretty bright with my gray here again I'm not gonna go all the way touching this with my gray because I want to leave that dark shadow right there get a little bit brighter gray Go right along the top edge right there. Add a little bit of dimension. And then I can't really see because there's some something right there but I'm going to go ahead and put a little bit of highlight on actually I think I'm gonna go this way with it wipe that off I'm just gonna bring some of that highlight down into the center on that side a little bit I think we should have got the rights to the song so we could have played, played it, it while you're doing during this. this show. I know, that would have been cool. What I'll do is that I'll listen to it on my headphones and then I'll sing it. <laughs> I don't think you're even allowed to sing it. Oh, they'll probably pay me to not sing it. <laughs> for sure. up and sing it themselves there, there we go all right so there we go there's our wagon wheel and then i'm going to use some so how long was this video going to be what oh thanks thanks for spoiling it for me <laughs> that was doing so good you did the wagon wheel in an hour yes I'm sorry folks no time for flowers <laughs> I'm going to 
leaves and this gray here. Add down below, grab some white. And then on this side, I'm going to add some dark. Just going off this direction. Now we're going to have most of this covered, covered with flowers, but I do want to have a little bit of salt in there just in case. Shows through, right? So now I'm going to grab this angle brush. I'm going to make some greenery. I'm going to use thalo blue or thalo green and thalo blue equal parts and some burnt sienna. That'll make a pretty teal color. Then I'm going to add quite a bit of white to it. I want that kind of sage turquoise color. start with a little bit darker color and actually I don't know I'm not seeing I'll clean that up so you want a little bit more green I'm gonna use the thalo green a little bit of burnt sienna and some white Okay, so we'll have a couple different greens to work with here. I'm going to grab some of the darker color first. And I'm going to do lines. If you use the edge of the brush, just draw it upwards. You can get... Right over our wheel. Don't be afraid. And you want to have these nice and close together, but the key to doing grasses like this is to vary the direction. What? Okay, thank you. To vary the direction of the brush strokes. So some of them are going to be crisscrossing. So some of them will go straight up, and then some of them will crisscross. If you do them all in the same direction and too too much the same height and everything, then you'll kind of end up with some sort of unnatural looking grasses. So keep them looking more kind of natural like. Just move, change the direction that you're tilting your brush as you're making your lines. Okay. You want some that are taller than others too, so kind of vary the height of these a little bit. I'm just going right over the top of the, all of this. Oh, I like it already. So cool. So the this is my favorite part of the flowers, <laughs> obviously. So I'm just like. So the background. What colors was that? People are just sh jumping in. Uh, the background red? Yes. It was uh, um, like. cadmium red medium, cadmium red light, and uh, quinacridone magenta. Okay. And so clean that out. Red, red, and red. And use some white. What? I was just letting everybody know red, red, and red. Getting some of that green, light green here. And I'm gonna make some little leaf. I think this this yarrow, I think it is, has these little tiny leaves off of it. You could just leave the grasses just like they are if you want to. You don't have to get fancy here, but just using the very tip of the brush and going on either side of some of these grasses to create these little tiny leaves. Just dots.
some of these I'm gonna create their own little stems go ahead and zoom in on this part I think we can keep it in frame there we go as long as I don't move it just going on either side tilting dip as I dab on these little dots and this is the thalo green and a little bit of burnt sienna and white look like wheat. Add some of the grasses with this. It's all about your contrast. So we went dark first. Now we're putting in the very lightest colors and we want to make sure we're leaving lots of that dark. That'll give us depth. So you don't want too much of any one. Too much light or too much dark just gives you kind of a blob all about the contrast all right there we go so we could actually just leave it like that it's kind of pretty but we're going to add some yellow and I think I'm going to go ahead and switch to my Willow's blender for this I'm going to use a little bit of the yellow oxide and some of the cadmium yellow medium to create a deep yellow and I'm going to even add just a tiny touch of green I'm going to do little heads on our flowers and keep them flat so these are that kind of yellow euro I think um, flowers they have this kind of rounded top to them. Just using that kind of rounded edge of the Willow's Blender at the very top so that it creates this rounded shape. If you were using like a, a Deerfoot stippler, you could do the same thing. You would just be touching down the very top of the brush like that. So same deal with the fan brush. You would just be kind of using the corner edge and filling in with it that way. Some of them are just little dots, so some of them are kind of peeking through some of our grasses. So just kind of tuck some of these colors in between some of your grass shapes here and there. We could have done this yellow first and then done our grasses and then done it over the top again but we didn't so we could add grass at the end as well if we wanted to make it a little bit more natural looking So I'm leaving a little bit empty space there, just to kind of let it, let your eye breathe, like Mark likes me to say. Thank you. <laughs> Grab some white here, and some of our cadmium yellow light. The white can help your yellow be a little bit more opaque. You might not need it. You could actually put the white on first and then put your yellow on top if you wanted to. 
ねmake it kind of thick it'll stick a little bit better I think I'm going to use my round brush and see how I like that because I might want to control it a little bit more so I'm going to use my round brush with my cadmium yellow medium I'm just going to go really thick with it and I think it'll cover cadmium yellow medium is a pretty opaque yellow in general so I think it should cover okay and I'm just going to do little dots over the top of my darker yellow areas. You can leave a little bit of that dark yellow showing through. It'll give it a little bit of dimension. Yellow is a tricky color to shadow because you don't want to go too dark with it because it's such a light color. You're not really adding darkness necessarily. You're just needing a little bit of a warm yellow tone underneath to create a little depth. That's all you really need. I've got that Wagon Wheel song playing in my head over and over again now that you said that. It's all I've been singing in my head this whole time. I'm glad I don't know how it Rock goes. Me so. more. I can't say it. <laughs> I'm not going to even go there, but that's what's been playing over and over in my head, just to let you know. Okay, well, I, I guess I'm going to... Thank you very much, honey. I'm going to listen to it right now. <laughs> well, it doesn't help that I literally watched it today. I, I listened to it today. I don't think I would have even known the words if, you, if I hadn't watched the finale of the American Idol earlier today. <laughs> <laughs> and I sing this song. I love this so much. I love the combo of the red and yellow together. It's such a pretty color combo. It's very like iconic country feeling too. Um, classic country colors. And it's, um, it's actually used a lot in advertising because it's one of the most eye-catching color combos that you can paint or have. It's used that's why McDonald's has it in their golden arches. It's a... Yep. That's a scientific fact. There's studies on, done on, you know, color color combos that catch the eye the most. And this red and yellow are one of the most eye-catching color combos there are. I think it was number one, actually. Which was surprising to me. Someone wants to know, can they use raw sienna for the shadow? Say what? They want to know, can they use raw sienna for the shadows? Oh, yeah. That would be great color. Yep. Very close to what I used. Mm -hmm. Raw sienna would be a great combo color for yellow. All right. So now I'm going to just add a few random yellow dabs here and there. And then I think I am going to... Uh, you're you're listening to it now, aren't you? It's country music. It is. Okay, I'm gonna add some white. I'm adding yellow and green together. <clears throat> I think I prefer Africa. <laughs> Africa by Toto is apparently like a big deal with high schoolers. They like begged to be able to play it in Spencer's band this year. It's, it's like a kind of internet phenom right now, I guess. If you, uh, we actually watched, I think, I think it was like dogs barking to it. And it had some, like, ridiculously huge amount of views, like 6 million or something views. And I was like, 
we are obviously doing the wrong thing. <laughs> Unbelievable. Yeah. Oops. At least I can yeah. sing the the high parts of that song. <laughs> oh my gosh. I was like Who knew? Who knew? <laughs> All right, so I've mixed some bright lime green here with my phthalo green and cad yellow light, and I'm just gonna add a little bit of it over the top of some of this. Some grasses. I'm not gonna do the extra detail, but I just want a little bit of this. So you can put them through some of over the top of some of these yellow. That'll kind of set them back. I find that if you pull from the bottom up and like lead uh, with the tip down, you can get kind of straighter lines. So you may want to tilt your canvas. I'm going to put a little bit of this right up underneath some of these where they attach to the stems too, just a little dab of the screen, and we are almost done. These somebody, are just like final little details. You don't have to... Somebody had asked what that this. sound was. I had the thing turned up because you were... Of you humming? Well, no, I said it was the fans in the background. Oh, yeah. But then they said no. I was referencing you singing or... <laughs> I can't hear you at all tonight for some reason. Because of the fans. Okay. So yes, they were referencing me singing, not the fans. So. Okay. That's Mark's... Yeah. I'm not it's, even going to go It's my there. strong suit. <laughs> That's why she married me. <laughs> I, would, I would serenade her. Your musical ability. That and the knee-high white tube socks. <laughs> I should write a book. <laughs> you should what? I should write a book. About how, how to, to catch woo a babe. women. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Jean cutoffs and tube socks. That was that was something else. That's all I'm gonna say. Hey, all I'm saying is that when you took the picture for me so I could send it back to my family. You cut my head off <laughs> in the picture. I did. Because there were flowers there at were your feet. Flowers at my feet. <laughs> and this is back in the day, back when you had to actually send the film out to get developed. Right. And it cost money. <laughs> and you get it back, and there I am from the shoulders down. <laughs> well, my parents were like this. <laughs> oh, yeah. Those were the days. Okay, so I added a little bit of the dark. And I'm just going back in with white and just kind of dabbing in a little random white. It's kind of mixing a little with the green, but just kind of another little detail. Just for some little, you know, you could probably splatter with this one. It'd probably look pretty cool. But I don't know. I don't think I will. All right, I'm going to call that good. Go ahead and zoom there out. And we're going to. End it. Yeah, I did. I'm going to sign it right over here with my Pigma pen. It's waterproof, so I can varnish over it, no problem. I love it. Getting ready for summer. All right, guys. Hope you try this. Super fun. Um, Give it a thumbs up if you liked it and come back next. What is it tonight? Tonight's On Saturday. Tuesday, so Saturday. Saturday. We'll be back. <laughs> you can get triceps on Patreon. Yep. Yep. Links down in the description. It's patreon.com slash Angela Fine Art. Mm -hmm. And uh, all the materials that I used are also down in the description of the video. Uh, and you can find the links to my Amazon store and the Brush Guys website where you can buy the Princeton brushes. At 5% off, yep, you make sure you use the code Angela Fine Art on the Brush Guys website to get your discount. And uh, we'll see you next time. Thanks, guys. Bye.